be patient with me, guys. This, uh, it's equally frustrating as it is for me as it is for you all, okay? Um, all right, so for those of you all who are just joining in and able to hear me, first thing that we need is a tumble buggy, obviously, because that's our main kind of central object for this project, okay? Or for this lab, okay? Um, all right, so we want to determine if this car's velocity is determined if the velocity of the car is constant or if our car is uh, accelerating over three meters, okay? So thinking about that prompt, what do you think a second tool measurement we might need is? Alex Akins? We need a meter stick because we need to be able to measure out those three meters, okay? All right, so Owen Holiday, would you do me a favor? Behind you, there is a meter stick, okay? And we're going to see how many meters we can fit onto this uh, table here. I'm guessing not over two. All right, so we need a meter stick. All right. And so now we have to start thinking about what other supplies we may need here. And this is where we might have to dive a little bit into our experimental procedure. Okay. So let's do some uh, brainstorming here. This is a little bit new for me because I've never actually done this brainstorming in person. This is something I've actually had you guys do in groups and then uh, check with me. Okay. So this is not something I've actually led before. Okay. Um, so the idea here is we're going to use a position versus time graph in order to determine if our object is speeding up or slowing down. Position is the easiest to measure. With velocity, we have to do additional calculations with change of position over change of time over a certain amount of time. Okay. Um, so we're going to use a position versus time graph here. Okay. Um, so what we need to think about then is if we're using a position versus time graph to measure our object speeding up or not. Okay what additional tools of measurement might we need? Okay, we have a meter stick here, but if we're gonna plot position versus time, what would be the other thing that we need? We would need a timer, okay? So specifically for this um, right here, okay, um, this lab is going to be more difficult to carry out because I actually remember now that with this lab, we did it in groups so and we had people multiple times, okay? So I'm going to try and do my best here to conduct this with the very limited resources we have. Okay, so we're going to need timers. Okay. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. And then the last thing that we're going to need here, okay, so what we're going to think about doing is we want a position versus time graph. Okay. We know this object is going to travel some amount of distance and some amount of time. Okay, specifically, I'm going to set it at one meter here. Okay, and I'm going to make this kind of more like a hypothetical lab since most of this lab requires us to be in close contact. And yeah, it's, I know it's not fun. Trust me, I'm the first person to admit that. Okay, that's just the year that we're having so far. Okay, so we're going to have time and we're going to have position on the vertical axis. Okay. So we know our object's going to start from zero, and we're going to say that's going to travel three meters. Since we're doing this hypothetically, we're going to uh, just say we're letting it travel for three meters, even though this is just one meter right here, okay? So just use some imagination here, okay? So the idea here is, um, let's say it travels three meters in five seconds, okay? So this is where we end up at the end. Okay, we need to determine if our object is speeding up, slowing down, or going a constant velocity, okay? So if our object was going a constant velocity, all right, what would our position versus time graph look like? You can make the motion with your hand or, or diagonal line, right? Something like this, constant steepness, okay? Um, do, 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 do. If we were speeding up, what would our graph look like? All right, Tanner? Uh, the, it gets steeper as you come along. All right, it'd be getting yeah. steeper and steeper and steeper. So this is constant. This is speed up. All right. And then if we were slowing down, if our object were slowing down, what would it look like?
it would be plateauing out. I see Alex Aikens making a symbol with his hand, or shaking with his hand. So slowing down would show us getting less and less steep, okay? So would we be able to determine a graph of slowing down constant or speeding up if we just record the start and end times? Like let's say I recorded this, this is my start time, then here's my end time. Would I be able to turn, determine what's happening in between just off those two measurements? No. So what else would I need to, what else do you might think I have to do in between the start and end times? Crystal? Crystal? Excuse me? Okay. So like after a quarter meter, we would record the time. After another quarter, record the time, so on and so forth. All right, so in more general, all right, um, what you're saying is we could like break it up into intervals and collect time over those intervals, okay? So that's exactly what we're, we would be doing in this case is we would break up our meter into meter stick into different equal intervals and we would record the time it takes for our object to get in between those intervals, okay? Um, so we would need something in order to break up those intervals and that last something you can use would just be electrical tape, okay? So we can just use, we can just state that we would need time tape right here, okay? All right, so now we have everything that we need right here, okay? Um, we can imagine, I'm not gonna break out the electrical tape. Um, we're just gonna portray a lab diagram of what this would look like right here, okay? Um, so for our lab diagram, All right, so now we have finished materials, we're on to procedures and diagrams, okay? Do, 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 do. All right, so our diagram we could draw as a vertical line. We could draw a horizontal line, and we could say zero meters right here, and then we could do one meter right here, okay? Um, and what do you think might be an appropriate interval that we could break it up in. We want a good amount of data points, but we don't want too many data points. What do y'all think we could use here? And I say could because there's not any one correct answer. Tanner? We could use four, but four is still a little bit too chunked up. All right, we could use a 10 centimeter interval, Tyler. Three centimeter interval. Three centimeter interval, the, bet, the smaller you get, the better, but then we also have to spend more time doing that. So three centimeter interval works if we have the time for it. Um, so we could break it up into um, either three centimeter intervals or 10 centimeter intervals. Again, the idea being more data points you have, the better, because that'll help you get a better graph, okay? So let's just say for right now with 10 centimeter intervals, which would be 10 centimeters is 0.1 meters. So 0 0.1 meters, 0 0.2 meters, so on and so forth. 0 0.3, 0 0.4 meters, and I'm gonna need to make this bigger. 0 0.5 meters, 0 0.6 meters, 0 0.7 meters, 0 0.8 meters, 0 0.9 meters, and then one meter, okay? Um, so that's what our track would look like right here. We can denote this with electrical tape. All right, right here. And then right here, we can draw just a little car for our tumble bug. And again, make sure you label these, all right? Even if it's like ridiculously obvious in this lab, again, that this is a tumble buggy, we're looking at a tumble buggy. Again, the idea is to get this practice down for more advanced labs if you were to move into a career in science where such tools are not so obvious, okay? So we have our tumble buggy here. Okay. And at each spot we want to time what's happening right here, so we could just draw a timer. All right, and that is our sample lab diagram right there, 
okay? Nothing more to it than that, okay? All right, so in terms of procedure then, we now have to work on a procedure. Okay. So what do you might think our first step might be here? First step? Excuse me? All right, so we have to lay out the tape. Okay. So measure one meter with meter stick, and then place tape at 10 centimeter or 0 0.1 meter intervals on the meter stick. So that way we know what we're, we have our track ready to go, okay? And that's more or less all we have to do for the 6 year mill setup. Nothing that is exactly uh, too complicated, okay? Um, so then the next thing that we're going to have to do is we already have our lab set up. There's nothing super complicated to that. All right, so next thing that we could do is what? We have lab set up. It's all ready to go. Excuse me? Well, before we time the tumble buggy, we need to... Where's my tumble buggy at right now? It seems so painful taking the obvious, but it's something we have to make sure that we're very, uh, very specific about. We need to place our tumble buggy at the beginning of the track, okay? So place a tumble buggy, buggy at the beginning of the track, okay? And now we can go ahead and start the tumble buggy and start the timer, okay? So we can release the buggy and start the timer, okay? All right, so now we have our buggy going. If we play a situation slow-mo out in our head, our buggy is going, okay? It reaches a 0.1 meter mark, so what should I do when it reaches a 0.1 meter mark? Lap. Lap it, record the time it takes to get there, all right? Now, it's past 0.1 meter, it reaches 0.2 meter, what should I do? Lap it again. So instead of saying lap at 0.1, lap at 0.2, lap at 0.3, what's a more general and uh, condensed way that I could put that. Tanner? Lap on each uh, 10 centimeter interval. All right, so lap at each 10 centimeter interval. We'll record. The time at each 10 centimeter interval, okay? until one meter is reached, okay? All right, so let's say now we have our data here. Okay, we have all of our data. Our data is complete. All right. So let's say we have all of our data. Our data is complete now, okay? Um, so last thing that we have to do is we have to take our data and do what with it now? Record it and then plot it on the position versus time graph, okay? So we can record the time intervals and plot on 
X versus T graph, okay? And that right there is essentially our process in a nutshell, okay? So what I'm going to attempt to do is I'm going to try and record some times and uh, I'm going to try to record some times here for our data table, okay? So at what, you know, what you should have right now is you should have the material sections complete and you should have the procedure section complete along with, um, along with uh, the diagram, okay? All right, so I don't think, yeah, I'm probably, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to report data for this because our tunnel buggy is longer than 10 centimeters, which is why if you noticed in the original lab prompt, I have it as three meters because 300 centimeters gives you much more distance to cover. Okay, um, let me see how I'm gonna do this here. So what I'm gonna put up here is I'm gonna put up a hypothetical table of data and I'd like for you guys to carry out um, the post lab analysis on your own for maybe your class. So plotting the data, okay? Remember that if you're gonna plot the data, we've worked with two different types of graphs. So what do we need to do with our axes in order to distinguish different types of graphs? Excuse me? Label them, okay? So label them with position versus time or velocity versus time depending on what's being asked, okay? Do not forget those labels, okay? Um, then you'll answer a question um, based on plot above, is your car accelerating or not? Explain how your graph supports your response. Um, in your response, um, don't only cite the graph to explain that it's accelerating or not, but also use it to explain what type of acceleration is it doing. Is it speeding up or slowing down? Okay. Um, and then what is one possible error that could have occurred during the lab and one physically justified improvement that could be made in order to reduce this error in the future? Okay. Um, so... What I'm going to do here, hmm, this is going to be kind of hard to see, but I'm going to give you guys, so what I'm going to do here to show you what possible type of error could occur here, okay, is I'm going to place the buggy right on the edge of this table right here, okay? If our buggy heads perfectly straight, like we would assume in ideal circumstances, what should happen to our buggy? It should stay on the table, right? But we know we're working with non-ideal circumstances. Things aren't perfect. So what is there a chance that could happen that if, when I turn this buggy on? It could change direction also very slightly and it could fall, okay? So I know it's not the most exciting visual, but think about that in terms of if we were trying to get our buggy on as straight a line as possible, um, because that would give us our best results. What type of error might you get in the fact that this buggy does not stay straight on its path like we just saw? That it can have the chance to deviate slightly from its path and fall and go to one side or the other, okay? Think about how that might affect our results. And if in an ideal scenario, how we could possibly improve that in order to um, reduce lab error and gain more accurate results, okay? So for your table right here, okay, we're gonna go with, uh, so let me make the table over here so I have more space. So if our table over here, we're gonna have a uh, position in meters and then time in seconds, okay? So we're gonna have zero meters, starts out at zero seconds, okay? We're going to have 0 0.1 meters, Actually, we'll keep this in, in centimeters because you have it labeled on your table as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So one will represent like, uh, so one on the position axis will represent like 
10 centimeters, two will be 20 centimeters, three will be 30 centimeters, so on and so forth, okay? Eighty centimeters, ninety centimeters, and then one hundred centimeters, which is one meter. Okay. Come up with plot of data here that will give us something interesting to work with. Seconds, 0.25 seconds. Some of you who are familiar with mathematical relationships may be able to see what I'm, what type of relationship I'm creating here. If not, don't worry about that. Just graph the points as need be. Okay. 0.64 seconds. 0.81 seconds, and then lastly, uh, one second. Okay. So let's try to say it travels a meter stick in one second, and these are time intervals that we met, uh, measured throughout, okay? So again, time is gonna be on your horizontal axis. You can cross out the axis provided and sketch your own axis, okay? So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, on the horizontal axis, you can go ahead and cross out and then plot these points right here, starting at zero. And then on the vertical axis, um, Again, you can let one represent 10 centimeters, two represent 20 centimeters, and three represent 30 centimeters. If you need to get closer to report the times, uh, please feel free, feel free to uh, do so, okay? And for those of you all at home who are completing this on a separate sheet of paper, um, you can create your own graph on a separate sheet of paper using these data points right here that I have listed for us, okay? So again, I apologize if this is not ideal. I'm trying the best I can to make this interactive within the limitations that we have, but 